Hey, it's Kevin Tofu with GigaOhm. In my hand, I've got the Samsung Galaxy Note. Some people call it a phone, some say it's a tablet, others call it a phablet. It's got a 5.3 inch display, hence the confusion. But I'd argue the real question isn't what to call this device, but really, are you a one or a two-handed smartphone user? I'll get into that a little bit more, I'll give you an overview of the device real quick, and of course, I'll follow up with a full review. But let's first, let's see what's inside the box. And I've already got the phone out of it, so I will just bypass this. We have a nice quick start guide, which is actually pretty handy. I usually don't look at a lot of the documentation, but this is actually quite good to get you started. You've got your health and safety warning guide from Samsung. And then inside you have a small USB power brick and USB cable. And I believe there's some headphones around here somewhere that I must have misplaced because I'm pretty sure they come with those too. So other than that, not much else in the box. So let me put that down and show you this bad boy. It's pretty big as you can see. Here it is in my hand. We'll take a closer look at it uh, and also compare it to other devices such as my 7.7 inch tablet, uh, my Galaxy Nexus and even my iPhone uh, because that's a 3.5 inch display, 4.65 inch display. This new phone is a 5.3 inch display and of course the tablet is 7.7. .7. So let's take a closer look at this guy and talk about the size and who this is for as well as who it's not. So before we talk about who this phone is for and what the right question to ask is about the Galaxy Note, well what the heck is it? Here's a quick overview of this AT&T LTE phone. You've got the beautiful 5.3 inch display, 1280 by 800 resolution, Super AMOLED Plus, great viewing angles although it does have a glossy screen. On the top you have a front facing video camera right up here. I've used that for Google Plus Hangouts already, it works quite well. We have the standard four Android capacitive buttons on the bottom. Left hand side of this thin device we have up down rocker switch for volume. On the top we have a microphone jack, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the right hand side all we have is the power wake button. So you just hold that right there, Oops. hold that right there to power it off, turn it on, wake it up. On the bottom You've got the micro USB port, another microphone jack, and then the S Pen, which is a, uh, let's see, has 256 levels of pressure sensitivity here because there's a Wacom digitizer underneath. And with this, you can navigate if you want, you can take notes. I can even, if I hold down the button, take a picture or a screenshot of the phone itself. What's on the display? There it is, copy to clipboard, then if I want I can circle things and write on it and save it, send it, share, etc. So let me get out of there. Uh, the S Pen will be getting an upgrade or upgraded software when this phone gets Android 4.0 this quarter and that is coming well, within the next one to two months is what I'm hearing, so we'll see. For now it runs Android 2.3.6. And bottom we've covered Peckside, uh, slightly rounded back slightly rounded all around the edges, 8 mm, I'm sorry, 8 millimeter, 8 megapixel sensor here with an LED flash, and then you've got your speaker for speakerphone, music, etc. So, so that's the hardware itself. So, so what's the right question to ask? Phone, tablet, phablet? None of those. The question to ask, and I'm going to bring my iPhone into the mix here, is do you use a smartphone with one hand or two? That is the ultimate question. If you are a one-handed smartphone user, then you are used to doing everything on, say, an iPhone or a small de screen device with one hand, easily reaching to all the corners, able to type all with a thumb, no problem. So you can carry something in this hand, cup of coffee, whatever it is, and you can use this phone all day long. Fantastic. However, ever since I first used a smartphone, I have always been a two-handed smartphone user, even with the iPhone. I always type like this with two thumbs on the iPhone, and I just always have. So. As a two-handed iPhone user, a uh, two-handed smartphone user, this is not a problem for me at all. I'm constantly using both thumbs to get around, do whatever I need to do. If I need to use one hand to scroll, I can certainly do that. If I want to, say, read a book in my Kindle app, I can certainly scroll with one hand here. Text input is rather tricky. Reaching up to the top left, also rather tricky. I have small hands and clearly this is a big phone, no doubt about it. If you're a one-handed smartphone user, I wouldn't bother looking at this phone unless you're willing to change the way you use your phone. Two-handers, I think this is a must look because it gives you the benefit of a phone and a tablet in one. Now here I have the 4.65 
8-inch Galaxy Nexus, and I have the 7.7 .7 Galaxy Tab tablet. This Galaxy Note fits nicely in between all three in terms of size. I may get rid of both of these and just keep this phone instead of carrying one or two different devices throughout the day. That's, in my opinion, who this is perfect for. Uh, why do I like this? I can tell you already. I mean, I can fit so much more information on the screen. Let's go back to the iPhone for a sec, and let's go to the Kindle app. I've read many books on all of my devices. Where is my Kindle app? Right here, Kindle. This is the same book. I'm not on the same page. I haven't synced, but you can see I'm probably able to read twice as much text on here than I am here. The same goes for websites. Let's go to web page. Uh, I don't want to go to support. Let's go to gigaom.com there. I'll do the same thing here. I'm already here actually. And here I can read more articles. I have more scrolling here. I don't have to zoom in to read the text here, although I can, obviously. It's very crisp and clear. Works in landscape, of course. It's more like a small tablet at this point for me. Two hands, tablet. So, again, one-handed user, this is great. I can see why you wouldn't want this. Two-handed user, I think you need to look at this. And, you know, maybe it's an upgrade from something this size. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'll do a review of the phone, of course. But in any case, that's really what it comes down to to me. If you want a two-handed experience and you don't mind that, this is fantastic in terms of form factor. So um, for now, I'm going to call it quits and just say that I'll have a full review of the Galaxy Note on AT&T's LTE network soon. I just wanted to point out one key difference uh, in, in trying to determine if this is a phone for you or not, what this can take the place of, a tablet, a phone, both. Uh, you know, there's lots of options here. This is a unique new form factor, I think, for the market. And it's interesting because at CES, I had this for about 10, 15 minutes, and I did not like how wide it felt in my hand. And when I first received the review unit, I still didn't. But, and that's because I'm used to a Galaxy Nexus, not quite as wide, and certainly not as big of a screen. However, just like it took me two or three days to get used to the iPhone's keyboard, which I think most people really did get used to it over time, and they didn't just magically uh, get used to that software keyboard in the first day. A lot of people had to be comfortable with it. I think there's a learning curve here that all of a sudden, after a day or two of using this, this doesn't feel that big to me, and this absolutely feels puny to me. So. That's my initial take on the Galaxy Note. Again, don't ask if it's a tablet or a phone or a phablet. Ask yourself if you can use your phone or are willing to use your phone with two hands in most cases. If that is the case, take a look at the Galaxy Note. If not, I'd say give it a pass. It's not worth changing the way you use your device for uh, if, if that's not what you want to do. So I'll follow up with a full review coming soon.